Hello, my name is Szymon Kucharski and I'm Export Manager at Semash Poland. In today's video, I'm gonna present you our front-mounted disc mower KDF-341S. I will start with the connection to the tractor, then discuss technical data, equipment and machine handling. So as first, we need to hook up the KDF to tractor's three-point hitch. To do so, we use lower links and the top link. And then, the mower needs only one hydraulic section to work. So once the machine is mounted and hydraulics are plugged in, the next step is to install the PTO between the machine and the tractor. The length needs to be checked first. And if necessary, the PTO needs to be shortened. Too long PTO shaft can cause damage to the machine and the tractor. Detailed instructions on shortening the PTO shaft can be found in operator's manual. Before first startup, you need to check the direction of the tractor front PTO rotation. As a standard, the mower is set for the clockwise rotation. However, it can be changed by flipping this gearbox by 180 degrees. After that operation, you need to remember about swapping the breeder with the drain plug in order to make sure that the breeder is on the top of the gearbox. Preparing the machine to work, it is important to set the headstock at certain height. Important distance is to keep 30 centimeters between this bumper and the headstock. This will provide wanted space for ground following. Once the headstock is set, then we attach support chains, which will determine the headstock height. It is very useful, especially when changing fields. Another important step is to set the cutting height. We do it by retracting or extending the top link. This operation changes the angle between cutter bar and the ground. When increasing the cutting height, remember that cutter bar can't lean backward as it will make the job not efficient. After machine is connected, the transport latch needs to be disengaged. In KDF mowers, suspension is based on four coil springs here. Ground pressure can be adjusted by extending or retracting the length of the spring bolt here. For example, when you notice an even fall of the working unit, the spring bolt of the side that goes down faster should be retracted. Machine drivetrain consists of a PTO shaft between the machine and the tractor with overload clutch, then with oil operating gearbox in the middle, then with two built-in PTOs with overrunning clutches, and then we have a gearbox that gives a drive to the cutter bar and a bell drive that drives the conditioner. Oil level needs to be checked regularly. So this is a check plug on the gearbox side. If necessary, oil should be refilled. This is a breather on the top of the gearbox and this is a drain plug on the bottom. In Samash gearboxes, we use regular gear oil 80 way 90. We suggest to change it after first 50 hours of operation, then after 500 hours or at least once a year. You need to pay attention and grease your machine. Here is a decal that tells you where the grease point is located. Machine is equipped with two single acting hydraulic cylinders. So when making a head and turn, you don't have to do anything with your lower links of three point hitch, you just lift the machine with those hydraulic cylinders. This is a KDF 341S. S in the name stands for the time conditioner. There are several adjustments that can be done to that type of machine. For example, we can set baffle plate for the crop yield you have with that handle. Closer to the tines, the higher intensity of conditioning you get. Then for thicker, more dense grass, the gap between baffle plate and tines should be larger. Conditioner is also equipped with inner 
and outer swath guides that form the swath in a wanted way. You can adjust them, the inner swath guides, with those handles and the outer swath guides with these eyeballs. So this is a belt drive that runs a conditioner. Always remember to check V-belt tension. If necessary, we can adjust the tension with this tensioning bolt. Additionally, we can adjust the upper pulley in three dimensions by means of all of these adjusting bolts. The correct setting is shown on this decal here. Conditioner shaft can be working with two rotation speeds. Changing the speed is done by swapping the upper pulley with lower pulley and changing the expansion bushing. During first startup, you need to remember to put the canvas cover on the machine and secure it with the straps from the underside. And then, which is a critical stuff, you need to put the canvas cover in between this railing and this metal plate here. Moving to optional equipment, we can install for this machine cutting discs with insteps that gives additional kick for the material, then single or double topping skids that increases the cutting height, then extended A-frame for tractors with short lower links and extended swat guides. You can see here an optional side shifting. It is dedicated for a smaller unit KDF 300. It is very useful when working on a hilly areas or when making a turn. It gives a better overlap result when working in combination with rear units at the back of the tractor. Mowers should be washed with water under pressure after each mowing, especially in between the cutter bar and the cutting discs, as dried mud with grass can cause premature wear of the bearings inside the disc module. If you want to learn more about working unit used in this KDF mower, you should go to our video Samash Perfect Cut Cutter Bar Maintenance, where everything is well explained. To reduce the transport width, the side guard is folded. For the operation, you need to put it down. We are in a tractor's cab. We are all set and ready to start the operation. You just need to remember to put the hydraulic section responsible for the lifting cylinders to a floating mode. Then you slowly engage the front PTO shaft until it reaches 1000 RPM. Remember, if you have any questions, or concerns, always consult operator's manual or contact Samash directly. Thanks for watching.